On today's episode of Get Inspired with Jason, the podcast and YouTube show, I have one of the biggest, and I mean biggest, reality television casting directors in the world of reality TV. We're talking Rock of Love, Jersey Licious, Below Deck. Broken Skull Challenge, Redneck Island, The Prophet, which I love. I love New York. I want to work for Diddy, From G's to Gents, For the Love of Ray J, Tough Love, many shows on MTV, Bravo, E, Oxygen, Singled Out? Are you kidding me? With Jenny McCarthy back in the 90s? Jenny and Carmen, yeah. What? We're talking Fear Factor and many more. Brendan is about to break it down and shake it down. Hey, this is Jason Roselle and welcome to Get Inspired, the official podcast and YouTube show that will empower your mind, body, business, social media branding, relationships, and anything that's holding you back from becoming the best version of you. Listen, before I became a TV personality, an author, a celebrity trainer, a life and wellness coach, and the founder of Caliente Fitness, I was broke obese for 20 plus years, full of stretch marks, full of excuses, and most importantly, here's the deal. I was unhappy. I was able to change my life completely, and since then, I've helped thousands do the same. This show is gonna bring you awesome guests, tons of helpful programs that'll aid you, but most importantly, your questions and topics that will make this show your show. My question is this. Are you ready to get inspired? Well, get ready, because the show starts now he goes by the name of badass i'm kidding his real name is brendan blinko what's up brendan my man jason how you doing man i'm great man thank you so much for joining us on this very highly anticipated episode because let me tell you the fans are roaring and they want to know all the nitty-gritty on how you've discovered some of the biggest a reality stars in the u.s in the world, and how you were able to cast some of the coolest shows known to date. Well, look, I mean, I, I think the reason I'm here is because I, I found uh, and cast uh, the man on the other side of this camera, um, <laughs> cast you on, on your first reality show of many. That's, right. that's uh, right. So so that's really, let's be honest, that's why I'm here. Um, but yeah, man, I, uh, you know, look, I, I started uh, in reality TV 23 years ago before it was real, 25 years ago, probably now, before it was reality TV. Look, I, I there was a time where I was uh, the king of train wreck TV, as I like to call it, right? With reality. <laughs> um, you know, look, I, I mean, when you read back those shows, it, it, it's, uh, I have such fond memories of th those times where where I really feel like I was able to leave my mark on, on pop culture with the, the casts that I put together uh, with a great team always uh, of, of casting directors working under me and, and um, working with great producers on, on most of these projects. Look, a lot of these shows are, are on TV still uh, and I'm not currently working on them. Um, you know, you, you mentioned shows like The Prophet or Fear Factor not always have I been involved all the way through, right? So like The Prophet, I did the first seat, the pilot in the first season, and then someone else did it. Uh, um, but then other shows like The Rock of Loves, The Flavor of Loves, no, sorry, The Rock of Loves, um, I, love, I love New York, you know, those shows I did all the way through. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was, those early shows were the glory days of reality TV, in my opinion. Uh, and when you go back even to the MTV shows that I did, uh, whether it was singled out, the spring break shows, the beach houses. I mean, those were when it was fun. It was fun. And, and you asked how I got started. So uh, now about 25 years ago, I was, uh, I had graduated from college. I, I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. I was applying to grad school. And I went to a bar one night in, uh, in Orange County and a girl walked up to me and she said, hey, you want to go on the big date? And I'm like, what's that? She's like, uh, it's a dating show. I said, well, how do, how do I get your job? Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, you have to come on the show first. So I went on the show. Uh, I, I, uh, I went on the show and, and in the green room, there was a sign saying now hiring uh, recruiters. So I went up to who then became my boss and said, hey, how do, you, how do I 
get a recruiter job. She's like, seriously, you want to do this? She's like, no one normal ever wants to do the recruiting jobs. So I'm like, yeah, it sounds like fun. You know, look, I was a single guy. To me, this was an excuse to go to bars, talk to girls, uh, like best job ever for a, a 25 year old guy. Um, and uh, I, I, so I went out that first night and walked up to the first girl and was like, hey, you wanna go on the big date? She's like, no, but I'll go out with you. Walked up to the next girl. Hey, you wanna go on the big date? Only if you're on it. I'm like, this job rules. So <laughs> I kept it professional, but, but that being said, as a 25 year old guy, like this was gold. I mean, my friends would wanna go out with me every night to go recruit. And, uh, you know, it, it was, it, it, it was great. Um, and one night I, uh, I just, and to make a long story short, the, the girl who recruited me was an intern. It wasn't even really a job for her, but to make a long story short, I got a, a 911 text one night and was like, Hey, can you move to LA and start full time tomorrow? And, uh, I was like, yeah, sure. So I, I moved up to LA. I was sleeping on the floor in my best friend's studio apartment um, and got a job on a, a show called uh, The Big Date. Um, and two weeks later, the show got canceled or didn't get picked up right away and singled out, uh, had heard that we, we didn't get a pickup and interviewed all of us for one job as a, a casting associate. And I ended up getting the job. And, and to this day, 25 years later, it's still the best job I ever had working on singled out for two or three seasons. I forget. But um, as I, as I said, first with Jenny McCarthy for a year and then Carmen Electra came on, but we were, it was a family, you know, we, we were, we were a family on that show. And again, this is when MTV was, was huge, was popular. Huge. I mean, you had street cred working at MTV, you know, I'd go, all we had was, I mean, we had at that time, uh, lanyards and, and uh, 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 little we had lanyards that said singled out and then a little um, just a little card that would, said singled out in our name and our picture right laminated <laughs> and uh, we'd walk anywhere we went we'd walk in and be like hey we're with MTV go to a concert backstage hey we're with MTV we're <laughs> looking for people for a show they'd be like all right come on back I mean it was gold Cool. Uh, and that lasted for, I don't know, maybe five years, six years, didn't matter where you were. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, so, so that's how I got started. And, um, uh, you know, from there, I, I, somehow I made a career out of it, a career out of going to bars, talking to girls and guys, uh, signing them up for shows. Um, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was great. That's awesome. So, yeah. so, so tell us the evolution. Cause obviously those, those were many years ago, right? So it went from being at bars, you know, scouting, essentially, you're a scout, right? You're, fi you're finding talent to be on, on these shows. And then, uh, correct me if I'm wrong from your resume, you moved uh, to New York and then back to LA, where this is where your career really started elevating, right? So walk us through that little journey, because as you know, then internet and MySpace came into play. So there's a lot of evolution from when you first started to that midpoint and then how you became the, one of the biggest OG casting directors. No, absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. Uh, so, so when I, you know, was doing the MTV stuff back in, oh gosh, uh, 96, 97, 98, 99, you know, when you'd be casting a show like a spring break undercover going and looking for teens or a fashionable loud or, or you know you'd be doing shows like that you would literally have to call and get a phone book sent to you so you could prep your trip um <laughs> or a dating show to go and and you know travel to cast people and find out bars and and stuff to go and set stuff up like it would take you weeks you didn't have the, the internet you didn't have even my space at that point to go and find people and we'll get to that later um but you know there was a lot more legwork that went into casting anything in, in reality um but yeah so so uh how did i end up in new york so i was um i had been doing the the oh all right so after um after singled out uh, I started working on some other, on other dating shows. Um, I still did a lot of MTV stuff. Um, 
and I had been I had been working in the Bahamas for a summer, which was all right. Maybe that was the best job working in the Bahamas doing beach houses. <laughs> right. Literally, my office was in the water in this on this you know uh, on the beach all day long. It was amazing. Um, but I came back to LA, or I was living in Orange County at the time, and. And I missed everyone I was working with who lived in New York. And, and I ended up getting a call from someone who I had met uh, while I was in the Bahamas, who was a casting director at a, at a casting agency. And she said, hey, we're hiring someone. Would you be interested? And I'm like, yeah. So I packed my bags and literally just moved to New York, had an interview and, and uh, started heading up their real people casting division. But it was, a, it was a legit casting agency and they did mostly commercial um, they did some TV, some film, but I, I came in to sort of head up their real people casting division. And um, as, a, as a result, I, I ended up still doing a lot of my MTV work, um, but I cast a film, which was, I, I cast Bradley Cooper in what I think technically was his first uh, starring role. Wait, wait, um, wait, 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 wait. Did he just yeah. say Bradley Cooper? Yeah, I don't know if he'll say I discovered him, but I say I discovered Bradley Cooper. I cast a Woo! film that uh, was at the time called The Gray Area. Uh, it was a low budget indie film. Um, and then, and uh, funny enough, like, I mean, and this was 20, 23 years ago, probably, oh, 22 wow. years ago. And then uh, I wanna say like maybe eight years ago, um, it ended up on like paper, you know, on demand. And uh, it was now called Breaking All the Rules, I think. I haven't seen it actually. I need to watch it. Well, you but uh, but yeah. So it, you know, all he had done at that point, he had done a. I remember he had done a Sex in the City, um, episode, Sex and the City, and I don't even know if he had lines. I think like he. I remember he got out of a cab. Sarah Jessica Parker started making out with him, and she went home with him. Like I think that was all that he had done great. at that point. Um, so yeah, that, you know, that was, that's okay. sort of the cool one. So, that, so that's like an elevating point in the career. And I believe on your resume, I think you worked or discovered another big A-lister, correct? Yeah. So, so yeah, that was working at, at, when I worked at Liz Lewis Casting Partners in New York and they're, they're still going. Liz has been going strong for a long time. Um, and that was a great experience moving to New York, working in this business. Uh, I mean, again, you know, sad to say like, <laughs> So much of the reason I did this job was my social life. So like being able to go to, to bars uh, and, and <laughs> be on the street and walk yeah. up to perfect strangers that I thought might be good for a show, for a commercial um, and, and just meet them, you know, and say, hi, and would you be interested in doing this? Uh, was amazing, you know? But yeah, I, I think you're probably talking about having cast Olivia Munn in a show, which was, uh, when I worked at G4, uh, a show called Attack of the Show, which uh, I cast her as one of the, as the co-host. Uh, and at that point, I mean, literally the reel I, I received of her was her doing sideline reports um, at like high school football games. So uh, I like to say I discovered her too. I mean, those are my big ones. No, I'm not proud that. of those though. And then, you know, another one I'm really proud of, and we'll, we'll probably get to it, uh, down the line, but um, was when I cast uh, I Want to Work for Diddy on VH1, uh, casting Laverne Cox on that show. Wow. And, uh, uh, you know, I commend VH1 for, at that time, really um, casting someone who didn't fit the mold of your typical reality show contestant. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I couldn't be prouder of all the things she's done with her career. I mean, amazing. Absolutely. So, so we stay online because we're, we're, you know, I, I know there's a bunch of questions I got for you here. Sorry, and I'm all over the place. Oh no, it's cool. I'm used to being on your side of the camera. Oh, not I know. On this side. So. Oh yeah. The literally, guys, whoever's watching and listening, Brendan, yeah, Brendan, have a sip of water if you need it because I got to get people prepped up for the juicy juice here. But before we get to that, because you're kind of like you know you we're now in New York. Tell us how you, because you clearly you're elevated, you're elevating in your career. What's the next step? You came back to LA and then be, right before Iconic Casting, tell us how the Rock of Loves and all these things happened. Yeah, so 
so sorry i'm having to like follow around but follow along on my resume to even remember because i, I mean this shit was 20 years ago now right <laughs> so um hey i'm so not I, that old <laughs> uh so i i i love new york i was never moving back and uh i was in key west for a summer doing um spring break uh sorry doing mtv beach house shows oh my god and i got a call that my mom's health had deteriorated and um and and i needed to move back and so i i moved back to la not knowing what the hell i was gonna do all my contacts now were in new york right and uh i started working on a show called eliminate which was a dating show. Oh my God. And uh, I got a job as a, a casting producer on that. And then, um, and then ended up uh, producing on that show. Um, and that was sort of my first experiences as a producer. And I also met my wife. Uh, so, so that was actually a good show to have taken. Uh, and I worked there for about five years. And in the meantime, I also then was doing, um, what else was I doing then? Uh, uh, did some Fear Factor uh, stuff, some uh, Bachelor stuff, but both of those were sort of an offshoot. That was a, a, a I, I was on tour buses for two months doing both those casting. Those, those are huge things. I, I'm sorry to say, I'm, I know I, I keep on interrupting, but you're like, oh, I just did a few, you know, Fear Factor. It's like, what? I grew up watching that. I was obsessed. How cool. Just, I, again, I have so many questions. So, you did these things, you met, you met your wife, you know, your, your mom was obviously ill at the time. You're going through this big change. You didn't know what to do. So you do fear factor. What else happened in that evolution? Yeah. I mean, there was like a two year period that a lot was happening and, and, and reality TV was really exploding yeah. as reality TV. And I, I have to give credit to my friend, Robin Cass, who uh, is still in the casting game, kicking ass. Uh, I think she's, she, she uh, sort of offered me a job. Sorry, so that's what happened. I was in Key West, I had to move back and I called her to be like, Robin, do you have anything? She was the person who essentially hired me on uh, the very first show I ever worked on, The Big Date. Um, and she's like, well, I'm, I'm taking over the second season of this show called Survivor, if you might wanna come work with me on that. And I'm like, I, I guess. Sounds like it's a good show. I know nothing about it, but all right. So I moved back to LA and worked on Survivor. And then she had the second season of Big Brother. So I went on that with her. Uh, and from there I started getting jobs on, or sorry, yeah. I, I then worked on season three of Big Brother. And from there I started getting more of the shows like Fear Factor and, and The Bachelor Tour Bus, which was for a, a show called, um, I forget what they even called it, but we did get people for for that as well. And then The Apprentice, uh, season two. Um, and so, so yeah, so I started working on these bigger shows as reality TV started getting bigger. Um, and again, these were amazing experiences. You know, you'd roll up into a town and have 2000 people waiting to audition. Like that was something that never happened never. with uh, the shows I was used to doing. Wow. So that was an amazing experience. And I mean, I, I really do say like, this was, this was when people didn't know what to expect with reality TV. This is when, you know, you could truly say to someone, what's your strategy to win Survivor? What's your strategy to win Big Brother? And like, people had to have, have one. Now, you know, everyone knows how the games are played. Uh, it, it's just not, in, in my opinion, it's not the same. Um, but yeah, so, so, you know, I was doing that stuff. Uh, and then I, I came back, I, that's when I came back to LA. Sorry, let me think for a minute here. Um, and so I'd been working, doing those and a lot of those shows. And then I worked on Eliminate, which was the dating show where I met my wife who worked on the show. She wasn't a contestant. Okay. Um, but, uh, I, the show ended and then I went to G4, worked on some shows there. And I got a call uh, from the guys at 51 Minds, who at that time had done the first season of Flavor of Love. And they were getting ready to cast a new show, um, giving a, a, a show to one of the girls who was the breakout star of Flavor of Love. And that, as we now know, was New York. 
Tiffany, New York Pollard. Yeah. And I believe they also did the show Surreal Life, didn't they? They did do, yes, uh, they did do Surreal Life. They had done a, a show, Cannonball Run. Um, but they really, I, I mean, at that point, I don't, I didn't know about them. Um, got it. So, so I interviewed with them. I, I got this show, I Love New York, that we couldn't say anything about who the person was. Um, you know, it, it, and that's, let's be clear. So many of the shows that I have cast uh, in, my, in my time working as a casting director, you couldn't say what the show was. You couldn't say who the star was. You couldn't say, you can't say anything Nothing. about the show. Uh, your hands are tied uh, most of the time, which makes it a little difficult. But yes, yeah, so I went on to uh, cast season one of I Love New York. Okay, and um, hold on. Now we're in what 2006, all right? Because obviously, this is the show that you found me. Tell us the casting process, how it's different from when you started to that point. Because even now it's changed, but like, okay, you're used to going on the streets because you didn't find me in the streets. No. You, you found me on Craigslist. Let's just keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> Where I trolled for all my men back then. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I. So leading up to, um, leading up to I Love New York, you know, so much of what I did uh, with the reality shows, like all the MTV stuff, all the dating shows, yeah, it was guerrilla style, like on the street, pounding the pavement, putting flyers up in windows at, at bars, uh, recruiting in, in, in bars and nightclubs, um, I mean, you know, literally driving down the street and cutting, pulling up on the sidewalk to stop someone who you think might be good for a show. I, I literally have done that. Um, and and as, uh, as we got into like 2005, 2006, starting to cast shows like I Love New York, there was this new thing called MySpace. <laughs> and MySpace became a mecca for finding people for reality TV. I mean, I, you know, look, you always, of course, would send stuff to legit uh, websites to try to get actory types on shows or commercials. Um, but, you know, with something like a dating show, I Love New York, something like that, you had to come up with different ways to find people. And, uh, and so, yeah, MySpace was the place. Um, and, I got a lot of people off that. I mean, I remember, you know, I'd say I, real in chance I got uh, I, I got on MySpace and um, their MySpace page I vividly remember was a a, a horse, a, a, a horse, and they it was their show horse picture, um, and we started chatting. I I grew up around Arabian horses, and their close friend was my dad's close friend. And so like we hit it off talking about horses and uh, uh, you know, they were, they were one that I definitely remember getting off there. Yeah, Craigslist was another place you would post things up. Uh, evidently, I didn't remember, but that's where you came from. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it, it, there started to become ways that made it uh, a lot easier to get people you wouldn't usually find otherwise. Okay. Okay. No, and, and it's crazy because what today is, say, whether it's the, I wouldn't even say Facebook, the TikToks, the, the Instagrams, right? That's like the MySpace of back then, right? It's like, where do you find these people besides guerrilla style? Okay. So now that we stopped that one show, we might as well start with some of the questions because again, you've done endless amounts of A, huge show, shows, B, discoveries. Um, while we're on I Love New York, and you, you just remembered you found me on Craigslist, or maybe one of your assistants did, all right? No, no. Back Look, Jason, back then, it was me. That it was, was it. You. I was the entire team. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I did have recruiters. Um, I had some casting people, but doing all the outreach on digital at that point was me. Doing all the editing was me. Like, wow. that show in particular... It was bare bones. Damn, that's crazy. So, so walk the audience, okay? Uh, you know, you're casting I Love New York. You're finding people on MySpace, Gorilla Style, and obviously Craigslist, where at the time I was literally living on a couch because I just became recently single. 
And I come in and I, rem I remember vividly, true story, and then we'll go into details because I'm sure my audiences want to know too. I remember an hour prior to meeting you because I was very reluctant. I had just got done getting my paycheck. I became SAG, which anyone out there, if you don't know what that means, is Screen Actors Guild, right? That's when you're like in doing stuff. I got my SAG card for, for doing a small role of, of three lines on Entourage season three. Okay, so I was, I was on a high. I was like, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm gonna become a movie star. That's why I moved to LA. So kid you not, I'm, I'm broke at the time. So I went down the street and I was like, oh, I'll just do this casting. And uh, what, just walk us through your memories that made you realize like, okay, A, I wanna bring this guy in. B, I need this guy on the show. Just walk us through a little bit of that. Yeah, so let's be clear. Since I interviewed you, I've interviewed thousands of other people and watched, uh, I, I mean, I have to assume 100,000 <laughs> interviews. So I'm not going to remember the details like you probably do. However, what I, what I do vividly remember was, and like so many great reality TV characters, is you were... How can I put this now that I, I say it like so many characters? Um, you were so unique. It was the little things that you would do and say, your mannerisms. You would you had this thing, you'd always like do a snap, like after every, there was something you did that was just so unique and um, that, that you could never replicate in a character. You weren't allowed to say who's gonna be the star of the show. Right. When I got to that mansion, right? I was blindsided. I did not know it was going to be her. All I knew and all the information you gave me was it's going to be one of the top girls of these sh shows. It could be one right. of these. Right. And, okay. and, and for anyone that's a fan of the show, who first came out of the mansion? This is a trivia question. Was it A, 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 a squirrel, B, Chamo, or C, was it New York? And it was Chamo, the gay assistant. And I thought I got set up on, on the prank show, Punked. I thought Brendan set me up this whole time. Oh, I never told you this. And I thought he put me on a show to compete for a gay man that was in Speedos half of the time, right? But clearly he was just the introduction. <laughs> and in the end, you sort of did end up with a man in Speedos uh, for most of the show. <laughs> Legit. 12-pack, yeah. a.k.a. Dave Ammerman, which is yeah. married with three kids now. <laughs> yeah. uh, you got, I think that was the true love story of, the, of that show. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I mean, whoever had the ingenious moment of purchasing the copyright, the licensing light, rights of Brokeback Mountain soundtrack to play it while we're having drinks and surrogates at, at the pool at three o'clock in the morning. I mean, that was... Classic. You I, I think you need to insert that clip right now here. Right now. All right, everybody, stay tuned. And if you're listening on the podcast, get on the YouTube, watch it now. So okay, now we're back. We're uh, back. <laughs> so so uh, so let me. So just a, another thing I remember um, about casting you, Jason, in particular uh, on I Love New York was you were high maintenance. There was a lot of hand holding that had to be done with you. Oh, so. So, you know, I pitch you, everyone loves you, producers love you, and then all of a sudden you start doing what so many people do in reality TV. You start getting cold feet. You start thinking about it. You start yeah. thinking how this is going to ruin your life, ruin your career. Yeah. And then I have to walk you off a cliff and try to get you back on board. So, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> I was having to set up meetings with agents. I was having to prom you know, try to make promises without promising you how this would help your career. Yep. Uh, there was such a song and dance that I had to do with you. I had so many late night calls from you yep. leading up to shooting the show yep. that, that you weren't sure uh, if this is what you wanted to do. And at the end of the day, you know, my success uh, is is a, a part of how successful the cast is. And, um, you know, definitely didn't want to lose you. But God damn, you were high maintenance. Oh, I love it. 
and, 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 and for anyone that wants to know the details, so obviously he calls me up. I'm trying to recollect. Clearly, I, 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 you know, he decides he wants me on the show. And of course, I get cold feet. Like I said earlier, I just became SAG. I'm living on a couch. I'm, I, I'm determined because I was acting for three years prior. That's why I moved to LA in the first place. And I was like, this is going to destroy my career, right? But it's better than living on a couch. Correct. <laughs> right. So mind you, and I'm going to say it out right. And, and I, you know, because it's been so many years. When you do these shows, you only get paid $100 a I, but was it a day or a week? What, do you I think on, on that show in particular, I believe it was a hundred dollars a day for each day you were on the show. Yep. So a hundred bucks. Okay. So anyone like process this through your head. So I'm living in a couch, hundred bucks. All of my friends say, you're crazy. Don't do the show. And I was like, why? It was getting to my head. And this is where I'll get into Brendan and our late night conversations. They're like, dude, how many people move to LA and in under a year, they become SAG you're, you're doing things. Don't mess this up and become some, some asshole on reality TV. And uh, pardon my French, but needless to say, it was my mother, but out of all people, my mother and grandma, Yaya, which everybody knows, they're like, do it, do it. We have a good feeling. We've been praying. We feel the vibes. This is going to be good. Brendan seems like a nice guy. Mind you, they have never talked to Brendan, but I told them about you know, this, I'm close to my family. So this is like a big deal. I'm a mama's boy. Right. So fast forward, I'm having, you know, my cocktails and surrogates at night. This is before I did reality TV. I'm calling Brendan. I'm like, dude, I don't know about this. He and I, he's having wine. I'm having whatever at the time and hours, right? Hours. We would hours. talk. <laughs> we, were just forming. we just built a friendship and because of the friendship, and I tell this to people, even in sales, uh, which we'll get into, don't try to sell someone, just be you and, and try to be as honest as possible. And that's what Brendan did. And not only that, he was able to get me interviews with uh, humongous agencies uh, to, you know, for acting, no promises. It's like, hey, you know, what you do is what you do, right? He was able to facilitate certain my high maintenance ways, which I still am in, in a particular way. But at the end of the day, it was my choice. And because how awesome Brendan was, I took a chance. I took a leap of faith. And it was one of the best decisions I made. My life never has been the same because of it. So thank you. Well, well thank you. I appreciate that. Very kind, very kind thing to say. And, and you know, I, I think my... I don't know, maybe in life in general, one of my downfalls, or maybe it's not a downfall, but is that I've always uh, felt that honesty is the best policy. And, and you know, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. And, and um, you know, so I, I feel like you've got to be honest, uh, or it always comes back to bite you in the ass. And, you yeah. know, look, uh, with a show like this, I, you know, I've never lied to anyone and said, I've never told anyone this is going to make you famous uh, coming on a reality TV show. It no. might, but um, usually it's for the wrong reasons if you become famous as a result of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, I would always say to people, like, you got to come on, be yourself, have fun, and make the most of it. Um, and, and that's what you did. Brandon, tell me, what is the favorite show that you've ever casted and why? Wow. I, I mean, there's so it's sort of like asking your you're asking someone who their favorite child is when you have <laughs> when you have a hundred children. <laughs> um, uh, you know, look, I've got to go back to uh, those early days with the VH1 shows, and just because it was so real. Um, I, I mean, I've got a few. Uh, obviously, I love New York because it was in my, in, for me, it was the OG, right? Like it was the original uh, gangster of reality shows. Yeah. Um, I love uh, uh, Rock of Love season one. I loved those girls. They were so amazing. Um, and, and again, such great personalities and characters and they were hot. Uh, but I got to say, one of my favorite shows that we did that, that wasn't as popular was From G's to Gents. And uh, this was a show where we took guys who, <laughs> who didn't have a chance, right? Who um, had, had, oh, you know, who 
were were gangsters uh or or just had had never been given that chance and uh you know this show was supposed to be a comedy but i think i think there was a lot of really great stuff that came out of it and it, and i really do think it helped a lot of these guys um and we did two seasons of that and it was a it for me it was such a rewarding show to watch these guys i mean one person who came out of that show was Riff Raff. yeah you know, I sure do. I sure do. So quick, funny story. So I find him on, I think I find him on MySpace. Maybe it's Facebook at that point. Uh, anyway, I, I, I find him, he comes in for the audition and has an MTV yeah. two on his neck. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, bro, what did you do? He's like, oh man, I'm showing him how much I want to be on the show. Well, we all know the first the first rule of reality TV is don't let anyone don't let anyone know you want to be on the show that bad. Right. Like, the last thing you want to want anyone to know is that you're desperate to come on a show. And so the producers hated it. The network didn't want it. And but he was such a great character that I had to fight for him so hard. That was season two, I think. But I had to fight so hard to get them to put him on. And I think he got kicked off the first episode. Yeah. Like, How can you not put this guy on? Yeah. And now he's, you know, now he's a legit rapper. He's been in movies. I mean, crazy. It's crazy. Okay. And to answer your question, I mean, of course, Jason, you're one of my faves. There's so many, like I said, Mr. Boston was amazing. Uh, uh, was it Midget Mac on season two was, yeah. was one of the greatest characters ever. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Laverne Cox, like, such a, a groundbreaking person to put on uh, a reality show yeah um, and even if you look back on some of the shows like big Bro big brother that i did like where i recruited these people and they came out to be such great characters or the apprentice season two when i did that some great uh characters i don't know i'm a, i'm proud of all of them that's awesome that's awesome um let me ask you uh what are some of the most awkward and crazy things good or bad that you've experienced during casting sessions or like say post casting any backflashes that were like whoa like i can't believe this guy or this girl just did this or said this you don't you know try to give try to give us as much juice as possible i i, I mean you know back in the early days you'd get a lot of boob flashing and and hear everyone's you know, secret sexual stories. And I mean, there was, there was always shocking stuff that you, when you heard one story, you think I'm never gonna hear something that's gonna shock me more and you did. God, I can't, I mean, I really can't do many. I, I can only imagine. I mean, cause I, I've, I've been in the casting world as well. I, I've, you know, I've helped out casting. I've casted a few films that I produced back in the day. Um, I'm sorry, I can't give you something. I, I really it's honestly okay. can't. No, it's okay. It's okay. That was um, a bummer. No, you're good. Okay, let me ask you, because then we're gonna leave off of what you're doing now, which is which is so awesome. Uh, 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 some fan questions. A lot of my gay following wants to know if you have any connections to Colton Underwood, who just came out. That's currently on The Bachelor. So my gay fans are going crazy, Brendan. They want to know. Yeah, well, uh, I have nothing to do with uh, him. Um, uh, <laughs> no, I just, I, 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 I read the headline uh, last night on Facebook, which is where, how I get all my news, uh, reading a headline. Um, uh, I, look, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that someone would be cast on a show who might be gay. I mean, look, as a casting director, we only know what you tell us, right? Um, and before someone goes on a show, again, not, has nothing to do with being gay or not, they, they run background checks, right? Only if something comes up on a background check, do you know about it? Um, none of us, the casting directors, the producers, no one's psychic. Um, and at the end of the day, you want to put the best personalities, the best characters, um, you know, a show like The Bachelor, I'm sure they want to put on the, the, the most qualified candidates for that girl or for that guy. 
Um, obviously, my guess is he is someone who just really wanted to be on the show and happened to be gay. Or Yeah, and then now, I mean, you know, uh, I think- Or maybe he figured it out after and, and more power to him. And, and Yeah, he uh, figured, let me come out of the, you know, like they say, come out of the closet, but like do it in a viral way where it's like now, because it's a lot more accepted now, as you know, than it was many years ago. So now it's like, if anything, he's getting a lot of love from people, you know? And I heard also was, uh, I, I, get, I get emails from different types of clients and followers. And, you know, I've also, just like I've motivated people to lose weight or get in better mental shape, you know, he might help people that are confused to want to come out, you know, right. to each his own. To each so his own. let me ask you this, I because again, I didn't read up on it did he come out on the show or he has since come out i believe i do, don't quote me all right we don't know I, I yeah i don't know i, I don't know i don't know but who, by the time people watch or listen to this they know regardless it is out publicly he is gay you know uh um he's 29 he's rocking and rolling people are eating it up and whether they're gay or they're confused people are a lot of people are siding with him you know what i mean yeah um, it is what it is. I mean, look, uh, it takes a lot of courage to come out, and and especially when um, when you're in the the national spotlight. Um, so more yeah. more power to him. I will tell you, uh, one of the last dating shows I cast, which was now probably three years ago, um, I was shocked with I would say one of every five applicants I got. And keep in mind, this was like a eighteen to 21 age range show but the number of applicants i received who were pansexual asexual uh um you know all these all these sexualities that i'd never have applying on on dating shows um yeah. and it was it was pretty amazing it was awesome that's awesome yeah they actually i just saw a preview you know how they right now actually it's a great question to ask this is my question as you know Paramount Plus now has an app and they just brought it up the uh, brought back the original real world cast member sorry cast members from season 1. Yeah. And then now they also have the uh, the what is it called the Road Rules Challenge is it? No. One of those. The challenge, I think it's just called the Challenge. challenge. Yeah. All Stars. Which is essentially these people are in their late 40s early 50s. Which I think is awesome. Okay? Do you vouch for an I Love Money All Stars on the VH1 or MTV app. <laughs> uh, look, I'd love to see it personally. Yeah. Um, I, you know, going back to the real world uh, season one, New York cast and having the reunion, I watched the first episode. Yeah. And I mean, it took me back. Yeah. I mean, look, I think an I Love Money All Star would be awesome. I think, you know, the, the fact that on, um, on the, some of the different apps they have rock of love from time to time they had have i love new york you know i've seen oh, yeah. these shows coming on um the different apps uh and valentine's day they've been re-airing um some of the different shows for years, years. so people know these shows so i think a, an i love money reunion competition would be great oh my god it would yeah be an interesting and, I, and, I, and look i mean i from what i've heard the the um the new york uh real world reunion season has been doing really well and it's because people my age still want to watch tv we still watch tv you know it's so funny it's every reality show you know or tv shows in general how how they everything's for the demo and it's like i think the one thing that that um for that demo market, that age group that, you know, advertisers want to pay for. And I think the one thing that, that the Netflix is of the world has shown is that like, you can make TV for anyone and they're going to watch. I'm so proud of you because not only have you changed the life of millions around the world by watching audiences get entertained, casted some of the biggest shows in network history and, 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 and found and created because of you, these huge personalities in reality TV, actors, like you mentioned, but you closed the books recently on the, the casting world and said hello 
to the real estate world where you yeah. are thriving. Yeah. So very shortly, and we're going to do possibly a follow-up episode if my audience says, yes, let's do it. Why real estate? How do you like it? Love it? And last word, words on, on, on today's episode. Yeah, so, you know, uh, two years ago, I decided to finally close that book uh, with uh, casting and producing reality television and uh, open up a new book. And why, 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 why? Tell us why. You know, there's, there's a lot of reasons why. It's something I thought about doing for years, but at the end of the day, I just didn't enjoy what I was doing anymore. I didn't enjoy the shows. I mean, for years, I didn't enjoy the shows. The demands were, were ridiculous on these shows. Um, it became a numbers game. It didn't become a, 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 a casting quality. It became, we want to see quantity. Um, and, and look, at the end of the day, my business wasn't what it was in those glory days of reality TV. So I, I needed something new in my life. And um, real estate was something I thought about doing for years. And uh, I figured, what the hell? I just got to rip the Band-Aid off and do it. That's actually a great show title. From reality to real estate. Watch Brendan Blinko as he unveils the houses, the homes of all. You know what I mean? Like, you got something there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us a funny story, because you mentioned this off, 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 off of the camera. You told me somebody found you on Yelp. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I did a, a Yelp ad uh, or or my Yelp profile, and it's still on there, I think. And I, I essentially said on there, if I can find twenty women to date, fav uh, sorry. Essentially, I had a Yelp. My Yelp profile says, if I can find twenty women to date Flavor Flav, mm -hmm. I can find your perfect home. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> He was a challenge, challenging guy to find uh, yeah, twenty eligible bachelorettes to uh, to date. Uh, season three when I did it, um, and uh, so yeah, if I can if I can find someone to date Flav, I think I can find you a house. That's awesome. So overall, do you love being a real estate agent? What is your favorite thing about being an agent? What's your least favorite thing about being an agent? For anyone yeah. that wants to become one. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, Jason, I, I love uh, my new career in real estate. It, it, it takes me back to when I was 25, working on shows like Singled Out and, and learning about television for no pay. <laughs> it takes me back there, right? Like everything's exciting and new about it for me. Um, I love, for the most part, I've loved everyone I've, I've had the experience to work with. Um, both with, with clients and with other realtors. I've had nothing but positive experiences. Yeah. Um, and it's, a, it's an exciting industry to, to start working in. That's awesome. But what do you, what, what advice, and I'm, and I'm saying this to you because as you know, I recently became a real estate agent a few months ago here in, in, in Arizona. I mean, mind you, I have other streams of revenue, right? But what do you do when you're not selling homes left and right? You know, do you, like again, advice: Should you save twenty k, fifty k before you become an agent? I mean, you got children, you got bills to pay. How do you go through that? Yeah, you know? real estate is definitely not a, a get rich quick scheme, right? Like you're not getting in there and making money day one. It's the opposite. You're yeah. getting you're getting involved. You're getting started in real estate, and you're spending money. Yeah, right. Like nonstop. Mm -hmm. uh, right away off the bat, you're paying for insurance. That's 2000 bucks. You're paying for business cards. You're paying for websites. You're paying for, uh, licensing. You're paying for, uh, being a member of the different, uh, MLS. You're, All you're the apps we have to have. It's nonstop. Um, and that's before you even have a client, right? And that's before you can even market and advertise yourself. Yeah. So it takes money. You know, I'm very fortunate. I have a wife who has a great job who, uh, is very supportive of, of my new career. Um, yeah. and, and if it wasn't for that, I, I don't know if I would have been able to make this, this switch at, at, at my age and having a family. Thank um, you. Thank you. Well, you just said, sorry. And I commend your wife big time. 
I don't think people realize, you know, when you have that support system, morally, emotionally, financially, it makes a difference. But I'm sure your wife, just like you, it, it, you know, she's a reflection of you, a smart, a very smart woman, just like uh, she knew how hard you've worked throughout your whole life. And she knows if he can make it in New York and LA doing all these crazy things, he can make it. And he, she bet it on you. And sometimes you need that, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you always need a, a support team, right? Like you're only as good as your team. And so it didn't matter if, if I was casting television shows, uh, my final product was only as good as the support I had from my casting directors working underneath me. Yeah. Um, when I opened my own business, my own office, Iconic Casting, which, was, which I was in business with for 12 years, I was only as good as my team. If I didn't have a great team on each show, uh, it, we didn't have a good show. Um, and, and it's the same with, with the family. And then it's the same in real estate. You're only as good as the, the, the people you're working with. Um, and to make a successful transaction, you need to be working well with, with the other uh, realtor. Absolutely. Um, what's, your so, least, what's your least favorite thing in real estate? One. Uh, Dude. And you just hate that. You're just like, ah, look, it's what I was bad at with owning my own business in television. I'm, I'm horrible at selling myself. Um, I'm my own worst critic with everything. And yep. so with real estate, you really, it's all about marketing yourself to get new, new clients. And so for me, that's the hardest, <laughs> the hardest part about it. Sorry. My dog's barking. Great. Let, let me ask you a question. And, and I get it's funny. I've never even asked you this in the whole 15, 16 years I've known you. As I'm sure you're aware, I coach people in different divisions. One of them is branding, yeah. right? Marketing, branding. And I do it through social media. I want right. you to think about this, right? But what if I told you in less than three months, we dropped 30 pounds. I hope you, okay. Oh! You see Brandon's face? Uh, That's the way. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I like it. Woo. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is anyone that's watching can see Brent. Brendan is a great looking guy. His personality is so down to earth and fun. I mean, clearly, you privately sold a good amount of homes, but imagine if you augmented that. You said it, and I'm not trying to sell you. It, I, I feel better when I'm thinner, right? Sure. And you know, what you lack in terms of selling myself, sometimes your personality alone, and you know this, you've sold homes and you're great at what you do. That's what sells you without selling, you know? Of course, of course. So, it's, it's, it's your, it's your, you know, it's your resume. It's your business card. It's, it's, it's what gets you in the door. Yeah. Uh, so, so the proposition, if you decide, you don't have to say it right now yeah. is I'll help you for three months. We'll drop 30 pounds, if not more. And I'll help you do a little bit of branding that will augmentate your business via the online uh, internet and obviously social media. Because that's the only thing I think you're missing. And you're like 10 out of 10. But I might be wrong. You tell me. Uh, maybe. Well, let's let's discuss it. Let's, let's discuss it. it. You know, I, I've been, look, I've been lucky to be with a couple different brokerages. Uh, my first two years, I was with Compass. Um, and they do a great job with, with, yeah, they're uh, great. with, 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 um, giving uh, the agent tools to help make, make them a, a better agent, give them better success. Uh, and I just moved over recently to the agency, which uh, is known as being a, a powerhouse marketing brokerage um, and working with amazing homes. And funny enough, you know, have a number of reality TV stars who are, who, uh, are part of the agency. So I sort of feel like I fit in there uh, just for that reason. Yeah, you do. But, um, but you know, I've 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 been very fortunate, I think, to be involved right off the bat with um, with with brokerages that have helped me uh, set up set myself up for success and and help me brand myself a bit. That's awesome. Well, look, man, I, I want to first off just I'm really happy for you how you've able how you've been able to do everything that you've done. You're still super young. And now you just started essentially a new career two years ago, which you're thriving in. And now you're with, like you said, the agency. That's that's a power house. I mean, damn, uh, how many cast members from, you know, Million Dollar Listing or is it uh, the Beverly Hills Housewives? These are 
huge. This is just huge. I'm very excited to know what's going to happen in the next two to three years. But in the meantime, I want to ask the audience, if you guys have any specific questions for Brendan, for any upcoming, say, episodes, or even in the thread, YouTube, Facebook, please drop them. Because, you know, whether your interest is A, becoming a casting director, B, a real estate agent, C, just a badass in the entertainment industry, drop us any questions. And Brendan Blinko, I love you, man. Thanks so much for taking. Love your you time. too, man. Thank you very much, and and congratulations on congratulations on all your successes and being able to, able to navigate a career post reality TV, uh, yeah. and and actually do it right, man. You've done a great job, so I commend you on that. Congrats. Absolutely. And if anyone's out there looking for a home, moving into Los Angeles, moving out of Los Angeles, I'm going to drop Brendan's information right here, right now. Check the description. Hit him up. And let them know, or excuse me, let him know where you found him. Because as you know, I'm a real estate agent too. And he said he's going to give me 30%. Uh-huh. <laughs> I got you, baby. <laughs> you know what? Uh, hey, thank you very much, Jason. It was a pleasure to do this. And, uh, you know, if there's questions, um, I'd love to jump back on with you and answer some of those. So absolutely. Get inspired. You rock. We'll see each other soon. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.